Hi guys, Four Extraordinaire here, and I wanted to talk to everyone about the current state of humankind, where the game uh, is really at with the Africa Cultures DLC, and at least what I think needs to be done to kind of bring player numbers up. And just, I want to take a chance to look at the role numbers and really analyze and dissect them. Um, I am no, by no means, just as a quick disclaimer, a 4X gamer dev or expert. But I just thought it would be um, a good opportunity to kind of compare and contrast Civ 6's player numbers and Humankind's player numbers um, and see what strategies work for both games and what strategies definitely do not work in the long run. So with the Steam charts here, we see something very, very peculiar. We start out at an amazing launch for another ahistorical 4X sandbox game. Extremely niche, I know, but still Civ has been dominating that genre. Uh, Old World didn't even scratch anywhere near this. I know we don't have the exact player numbers for Old World, but I'm um, just looking at the game's popularity. Um, it did not even get anywhere close to 50,000 at launch. However, Humankind did take a massive, massive drop in the upcoming two or three months. August, um, October, November, and September. So I know that's not an order, but just in those like roughly two to four months, they took a massive drop. In August, it goes to 18,000. In September, it goes to 6,000. And in October, it goes to 3,500. And then November, the pattern is similar. It just keeps dropping off, dropping off. And then it starts to stabilize around late November. So what exactly is the reason to this? And I've talked about this in a prior video. I'll link it in the top right-hand corner. But basically, my theory here is that with the game um, and the kind of the dev slow rollout of patches, players simply lost interest. And that there's also the fact that the game itself is kind of lackluster i mean the mechanics are there but the ai and the bugs at launch were quite crippling um, and it left a really really bad impression i'm talking about basic bugs like not even being able to click on units and stuff like that that civ 6 at launch simply did not have so with civ 6's launch they had a bigger launch uh, as to be expected this is not their first rodeo and then they rapidly dropped off however it only dropped by half humankind dropped like in total by 98 percent um, which when you compare like half off to almost charging you 1% of the total full price, um, this is just completely crazy. So uh, something is interesting though, if you didn't know, uh, Civ 6 had a initial um, release strategy where they would kind of do a season pass thing, much like the new Frontier Pass um, called, I guess, I think it's the DLC pass or something. It was something weird, but basically they released cultures like Poland, Indonesia, um, in Nubia across uh, like several months. And the strategy here was to just keep uh, player interest fresh. And it looks like that was actually fairly sustainable. As you can see, there's general spikes from about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 players. So it's nothing big, but then you get to the expansions and you see this massive spike and then a quick drop off, kind of like with the release. So it's only until you get to the new Frontier Pass over a sustained amount of time and with kind of a renewed interest in the game that you see uh, much higher player numbers. You don't see quite as dramatic peaks as the expansions, but you'll still see just more of a sustained, um, healthy player base that's coming in. with each individual DLC pack here. Like you can see, um, here are the Mayans and here are, actually I take that back. June is the Mayans over here, but here is like the, I think the last release with um, the Vietnamese and um, the Babylonians. So you can see it's starting to fall off there. Anyhow, the point is that unless you're really doing expansions, at least what I can see here, um, you're not going to get a huge player spike. So if people were surprised that the Africa DLC was not going up, it wasn't necessarily because the Africa DLC uh, didn't invent the we uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, it's more so because with expansions, content team t tends to be a lot bigger. Six humankind cultures, while it seems impressive at first, um, this is their first DLC and it's not exactly uh, massive. So that's key. there's that to bear in mind. You also have to just keep in mind that expansions have a lot more marketing and advertising and the Africa DLC uh, did not necessarily have that. We learned about it like one or two weeks before its release and then it's out right now. So to answer the question for this video, did uh, Humankind's Africa Pack revive the game? No, it did not, but it still seems to at least be making some good steps towards at least bringing some of the hardcore players back and adding some new cultures. Uh, I don't think it will exactly bring uh, some of the newer players back that only play like Civ 6 and are kind of just a light 4X fan. Um, I think they're going to need to do something like an expansion to that to do that and really start uh, investing more into advertising because their advertising campaign uh, let's just face it, it's not too, too good. You can see here with Twitch, I didn't want to just take a sample from Steam. I just I tried to at least 
broaden my perspective here. I know with my pre previous videos, it's kind of only been looking at Steam. So I just wanted to round out my portfolio here. So you can see here it had a huge release. Um, this, you're probably wondering what these uh, numbers are. These are from the past betas, like the Lucy Open Dev and the Victor Open Dev and the Poe Open Dev, um, which is why there's numbers here. Um, not like people were illegally playing the game. They just had open devs there. So here's the actual release. And then you can see um, there's spikes here and there with updates. And then there's a little spike here with the Africa DLC. All right. Finally, we have a roadmap for humankind released by the devs, which I think is was very needed. We needed this since it released all the way back in August. And this kind of details what is coming to the game. Um, there's going to be a continued release of Cultures, Wonders. They said in the Discord that there's going to be an expansion, but we don't know when. I assume it's going to be directly after this Culture release, but I don't know exactly the details of that. Um, they're going to add things like Immersive Empire names, UI notification options, game stability, AI improvements, affinity balancing, and they also are updating their dev blogs continuously. So if you want to learn more about this, you can always check this out on the community tab of my uh, YouTube channel, or just go ahead and join the Humankind Discord and ask the devs, and they should be um, able to respond within like a few hours or so. Was, you'll probably get back to by the uh, community 